But with the spot price in the red today, I think it gives us the opportunity to capitalize on it, get more silver for a slightly lower dollar amount, and reap the benefits long term. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. Today I wanted to talk about the spot price of silver creeping down to now the $24 range and whether or not I think this is a good thing or a bad thing and what type of silver I plan on picking up next. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. But today, I wanted to talk about the spot price of silver. Now, this was something that I probably should have talked about on Friday, but I had some other things that I had to talk about in those videos. But today, it is Sunday, and obviously the market is closed, and the Asian markets will be opening up in a few hours. And who knows, by the time I post this video, the markets might already be open. But as I'm recording the video, it's Sunday afternoon, and the spot price is about $24.79. Now, for those of you who remember, for those of you who don't remember, about a week and a half ago, I posted a video talking about silver climbing all the way up to above $27 an ounce. And I thought that that was interesting because silver was pretty much stuck at the $25, $26 mark. I remember silver was barely even moving very much. It was $26 and change for quite a long time, and it wasn't really moving any way at all. It wasn't going up, wasn't going down, wasn't really doing anything. Then to see it go up and above $27 about a week and a half ago, I thought that was newsworthy. I thought silver was maybe potentially going to be on the move. I thought silver was going to be, who knows, maybe continuing to climb up, maybe $28, $29 potentially. I hope not, but you never know. So I talked about silver going up and above $27 an ounce, and then about three days later, and by the way, in that video where I was talking about $27 an ounce, I talked about how I had a feeling that it was going to be short-lived, at least in the short term. I was like, yeah, it's up to $27. Who knows? It might even go up to $28, $29, but something tells me it's going to come right back down. And a lot of people disagreed with me, which is perfectly fine. We don't all have to agree on everything at the same time. Speculation at the end of the day, so we're all just kind of making assumptions. Turns out, three days later, silver did fall back down. It's about $25 an ounce. That was about a week and a half ago, maybe a little bit less than that, but here we are this weekend, and silver's down even more. Silver is down to the $24 range. It's $24.79 as I'm recording this video. Now, truth be told, I've been so busy and preoccupied with everything else going on, I didn't even know that silver went below $25. Somebody let me know during last night's VIP Club stream. And we talked a lot about silver. We talked a lot about the spot price. We talked a lot about gold. We talked a lot about 90% pure silver, pure gold. We talked about a lot of different things, truth be told. But I thought it was interesting to see that silver is now even lower than what I had thought it was, which is good news for me because that means I should be able to get more bang for my buck. I should be able to get a little bit more money for my currency. Hopefully I can add a little bit to the stack. And I've been thinking about it. I do have some new gold on the way, but I haven't picked up any silver this entire year. That needs to change. So what my plan is to more than likely get me some 90% silver. That's probably what I'm gonna be going with. Probably gonna be going with some just simple Washington quarters or Roosevelt dimes. Those are usually the 90% coins with the lowest premiums. When you're looking at standing Liberty quarters or Mercury dimes or really any type of silver half dollars, the premiums start getting cranked up a little bit. But on 90% common coins like the Washington quarters and the Roosevelt dimes, usually the best bang for your buck unless you get a deal on a certain site. But generally speaking, that's probably the easiest stuff to get your hands on. That's more than likely what I'm gonna be picking up next. 
probably going to be picking up a nice handful or a nice bag of 90%. That's what I'm going to be going with. And to be honest with you, that's probably what I'm going to be doing most of this year, if possible. I want to go after as much 90% as I can. I'm still over three years deep in stacking. I'm still not overly enthusiastic about 90%. But I've become a pretty big fan of it. I like it. I appreciate it. I respect it. And I definitely want to get some more. But in addition to the 90%, something else that I want to do this year is pick up some new 10-ounce bars. And there's a lot of 10-ounce bars out there. There's the Britannia, which is arguably the most beautiful silver bar out there. I want to get an RCM bar. I want to get a Silvertown bar, potentially a Scottsdale bar, potentially a Westminster bar. There's a lot of 10-ounce silver bars out there. I want to get one of each of them. So I will be stacking as many 10-ounce silver bars as I possibly can this year. But the main priority is the 90%. The reason for that is because, like I said, low premium, easy to work with. But my favorite thing about the 90%, as I talked about in yesterday's video, is that it gives me the ability to break an ounce if need be. I talked about how all it takes is six silver quarters to break a troy ounce. Well, you know what? All it takes is 60 silver quarters to break a 10 ounce silver bar if you absolutely needed to. Not to say that you would be in a position where you needed to, but it's always good to have the option. And if you're gonna be stacking the silver and stacking the gold, you're probably of the be your own bank mentality. And if you're gonna be your own bank, you're gonna to have to have all the denominations. I talk about this all the time. If you're gonna be your own bank, you're probably gonna be stacking dollar bills as well. I think currency plays a role, pretty big role, by the way. You don't wanna have just a bunch of $100 bills or $50 bills. You're gonna need the 20s, the 10s, the fives and the singles as well. I think those are important pieces of the puzzle when it comes to being your own bank. But with the spot price being in the $24 range, it's technically closer to $25 than $24 even, but it's still in the $24 range. And what I would like to see is it continue to go down when the market opens up this evening and especially this upcoming week. I would like to see some more red days. I would like to see silver go down to closer to $24 even. Maybe even go down to $23, $22, $21. I don't know if that's going to happen. It could. I think it might. I hope it will. And the main reason is just so I can get more of it. I am nowhere near done. I am nowhere near satisfied in terms of how much silver I want how much silver I believe I need. That's a common question, especially from people who are brand new to stacking. They will ask or they'll wonder how much silver they actually need, how much silver is enough. And to be honest with you, due to the fact that silver is money, if you're wondering how much silver is enough, you're essentially asking how much money is enough. I don't think there's such a thing as having enough money. How much silver is too much silver? It's like asking how much money is too much money. I don't think there's such a thing as having too much money. You can never have enough money. You can always get more. Whether you're talking about actual money or if you're talking about the fiat currency fake money, the dollar bills. You can never have too many dollars. You can never have too much silver. That's the way I see it. And if you're wondering how much silver or how much gold is ideal to have. I believe it varies person to person. I believe you need to take a step back and evaluate what you have going on, your financial situation. If you have a whole lot of debt, you might want to pay that down and eliminate it before going full throttle on silver. Because if you continue to stack silver and gold aggressively while not worrying too much about the debt, then you're simultaneously accumulating wealth and debt at the same time, which is kind of counterproductive if you think about it.
But aside from the debt, you have to figure out what makes sense in terms of your income, your expenses, because it's important to remember. You can have a guy living in a nice big house, six bedroom house, bunch of kids, brand new car, from the outside looking in, seems like a pretty wealthy guy, or a rich guy, or maybe upper middle class, or pretty well off financially, but because of all those expenses, he might be living paycheck to paycheck. Then you look at a guy who lives in a one bedroom apartment by himself, with a 13 year old car, or maybe he doesn't even have a car, maybe he bikes to work, or bikes to wherever he needs to go. Older clothes, doesn't wear the Louis Vuitton or anything fancy like that. He might be a millionaire. So your income, your expenses play a role in determining how much silver it is that you need. But in addition to that, gotta remember, how many people are you financially preparing for? How many people are on your list? Are you someone like me? Not married? And plan on never getting married? Don't have kids? Plan on never having kids? And obviously, people like us have a smaller number of people to worry about. We're prepping for ourselves, not for a family. But if you're someone who has a spouse and two kids, that's four people you're worrying about, yourself and three others. These all play a role in determining how much silver is a pretty solid amount of silver. And the thing is, once you determine how much silver is a really strong goal, once you hit that goal, you're probably going to want to raise the bar. Because there's really no use in stopping. There's really no use in slowing down. There's really no use in saying to yourself, okay, I have enough silver. I don't need any more. In my opinion, from my perspective, not a financial advisor, nothing on this channel is financial advice. Do your own research, form your own opinions, make your own decisions based off of your conclusions, not mine. But in my opinion, once you get to a certain amount of money that you're satisfied with, maybe you set a goal for yourself and you hit that goal, I don't think it's very smart to take your foot off the gas. I don't think it's very smart to retreat or backpedal or anything like that. But it's all personal preference at the end of the day. It's just the way I see it. Why stop? Why not continue saving? Why not continue accumulating wealth? Because in my opinion, that can be generational wealth. It doesn't have to be something that you just sell or convert back into cash just so you can spend frivolously or recklessly do whatever you want with. I don't think that's the main reason people are stacking silver for I'm sure some people with short-term mentality are stacking, hoping for it to go to a trillion dollars an ounce so they can cash out and buy a mansion, but in my opinion, people like that are probably stacking for the wrong reason. I think business, stocks, and real estate are a better way of creating wealth. Silver and gold, it's about saving wealth, in my opinion. But with the spot price in the red today, I think it gives us the opportunity to capitalize on it get more silver for a slightly lower dollar amount and reap the benefits long term. I believe silver will go up in the long term. In the short term, I have no idea because in the short term it goes up and down. Down today, up tomorrow. Down the next day, up after that. Down on Friday, up on Saturday. It's always going up and down. It's the volatility, it's sporadic, it goes up, it goes down, there's really no way of telling which way it's going to go, and I have found that it's quite foolish trying to time the market and trying to make these weird little psychic predictions. I don't find that to be productive at all. But on the red days, when silver's down, that's the time to capitalize. At least that's the way I see it. That's the way I see it through my eyes. That's just my opinion. Maybe you have a different opinion. Maybe you think it's better to convert your dollars into silver when it's up. 
Maybe you sit around waiting when everybody else is converting their dollars into it. And then when spot price really starts to take off, maybe then you think it's a good time to jump in. Follow the trend. Follow what the, the news is talking about. Silver made the news last year, that's for sure. Simultaneously, a lot of people hopped on board the silver train last year. Some people hopped on board because they were introduced to silver and they thought it was an interesting concept and they wanted to be a part of it and they wanted to preserve their wealth mainly because you have no idea what's going to happen economically speaking we don't know what's going on and last year taught us that anything could happen so a lot of people saw silver as potentially a safety net other people however were just simply following the trend silver unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it was trendy last year toward the beginning of last year march april may of 2020 a lot of people were stacking for similar reasons to why most of us are stacking for long-term wealth preservation however there was a good number of people who were stacking just because it was trendy now they can do whatever they want pretty sure they've all fizzled out by now silver was no longer really being reported on because it stopped doing crazy things but a lot of people hopped on board just trying to make a quick buck they hopped on board because they saw silver was going up maybe they thought it was going to go to 30 50 90 a million dollars an ounce they hopped on board for that reason right there but the rest of us those of us who knew the true reason to stack silver to preserve wealth for the long term not to make a quick buck i promise you your silver bars are not a get rich quick scheme hate to break it to you it's for the long term it's for the long haul and that's what most of us are in it for and I'm curious, everyone watching this video right now, what are your thoughts? Are you going to be diving in some more this week or weekend or, or this upcoming week rather? Who knows, maybe when the market opens back up officially, silver will continue going down. Maybe it'll be closer to $24 even or who knows, maybe $23 and change. No clue, no idea, there's no way of knowing. But head on down to the comments and let me know if you plan on capitalizing on what appears to be an opportunity for the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms. Not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller, easier to manage. I'm also doing giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of the videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to subscribe. New videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content brand new video over there go check it out the link will be in the description trying really hard to hit 2,000 subscribers we just hit 1500 and I appreciate that and if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise of course we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies which are up for grabs along with a ton of other products t-shirts hoodies even stickers many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two-ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And once again, I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know. What are your thoughts on the spot price of silver right now with it being below $25, $24.79?
Of course, as I'm recording the video, who knows what it's going to be by the time you watch the video, but what are your thoughts on silver being down in the $24 range? Do you see this similar to the way I see it as an opportunity, something to capitalize on? Do you plan on getting any new silver today, maybe tomorrow, this upcoming week? Hopefully silver will still be in the red. And if so, what do you plan on picking up? Maybe some 90%, maybe a couple tubes of silver eagles or maple leaves, maybe some 10 ounce bars, maybe some kilo bars. Or maybe you're not really focused on silver at the moment, you plan on picking up some gold. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.